The next update in Warframe is called Kumean the Five Fates, and it will be available on October 2nd, which brings new Warframes, weapons, and several Warframe reworks. Before we talk about the new stuff, I would like to discuss on the two Warframe reworks and two Warframe balancing, namely Caliban, Nova, Wukong, and Hildren. Also, I want to share to you how these changes affect the Warframes in terms of effectiveness in real mission. First, let's talk about Nova, which is my favorite part of the update. Now, Nova's passive will be changed from a non-existing passive ability to a very helpful one, which is in tune with the fast-paced gameplay of the Warframe. Right now, you won't feel the impact of her passive, but after the rework, the Warframe will get a chance to either drop a health orb or an energy orb after you kill enemies affected by Molecular Prime. If they are affected with the speed buff, then they will drop energy orbs, but when they are affected by the slow buff, then they will give health orbs. This is huge, and you can exploit this with the Equilibrium mod that can convert the health orbs drops to energy and vice versa, or you can also use an Archon shard that grants the effect of the Equilibrium mod, so you won't spend a mod slot intended for something more useful for your playstyle. Also, Nova with this kind of effect, especially the slow version of Molecular Prime, will be harder to kill as aside from slow. You can also equip the health conversion mod that grants 1350 armor, which then translates to more damage reduction on health. You can also pair this with adaptation plus the damage reduction you get from your first ability. I know this is kind of overkill, but I'm only sharing possible options here that you can equip in your build if you haven't got the other mods yet. Aside from all that survivability and energy efficiency through the equilibrium effect, Nova will also get a massive buff in her first ability, you can now recast Null Star after the update. With this, you can maximize your damage reduction, and the best part is, they will also increase the base particle, which means that we shred some duration mods in our build for new mods. In the past, you must put all duration mod in Nova to get the full 90% damage reduction on health. After the update, it will be much easier to get the full 90% damage, and this will probably give more build diversity and effectiveness in real mission, as we now have the option to not use narrow-minded in our build. Also, for those who have included duration in their their Tau Forge Shard slots, then you might have also the option to pick another build setup for your Tau Forge Shard with the upcoming changes. Finally, the damage reduction of her first skill will now get applied to both your shield and health, and from Slash, it will turn into Blast Damage, which makes it more interesting since the status type right now has the Detonate effect which deals good damage to enemies without armor. Also, since the ability is recastable and you now have the option to get overflowing energy, there's also the option to recast the ability to stack Blast into targets and dealing decent damage to them with your first ability. They also made changes to the augment and recasting neutron star will cause remaining particles to seek out enemies and then replenish the particles orbiting nova in addition heat damage in guaranteed heat proc now apply to all null star particles not just the ones sent out via recast they are also making impactful changes on the antimatter drop and i think it perfectly synergies well with the blast status effect effect from her first ability the new king skill of nova will be easier to manipulate as it won't move around and it will stay on center wherein you cast the ability then it will only take five shots to charge the particle to max damage and by the way, this excludes multi-shot. So expect that those guns with high multi-shot can charge the Ball of Doom in just one shot. Also, tapping the ability input while an antimatter drop orb is active will massively increase its speed, causing it to zoom in the direction of the player reticle. This is insane, and I think that the nuke bomb is not a tactical weapon anymore, but a tool that will be used to cater with the fast-paced gameplay of Warframe. And lastly, they change it from radiation to blast damage, which is the best possible change that they did for the ability. Radiation damage is ass in my opinion, as it does not deal good damage universally, and enemies that got the radiation procs will have the confusion status that will make enemies attack their allies. This is good for crowd control, but it really is annoying in survival missions since if you are moving from one room to another while killing enemies, then there are instances wherein you might have not killed one enemy affected by radiation, and recently spawned units will attack that target, causing disruption in enemy flow which lessen your effectiveness in maintaining your life support. Blast damage is a huge change, and with the current meta that can strip armor and shield easily, this will be a massive massive win to Nova players. I am now salivating on the fact that you can subsume Pillage in your build to replace the Wormhole ability. Since Nova will be energy efficient, we can recast Pillage anytime we want to strip armor and shield, while giving us shield for survivability. The shield gain will be enhanced further by the damage reduction from her Null Star, and enemies that got fully stripped with their armor and shield will be susceptible to the damage of your antimatter drops blast damage. Nova will be insane in the upcoming update, but wait, there's more. Molecular Fission will get a well-deserved change, and after the update you can freely cast speed or slow debuff.
buff to enemies. Tap the ability to slow enemies while tap and hold the ability button to inflict the speed buff. This is huge, and I have been looking advocating for this change in years. And finally, we will truly harness the power of Nova's molecular fission. Another thing that I like about this is that they will remove the negative power strength requirements just to get the speed Nova build running. This means that we can have one versatile build for our Nova, which can utilize all her power in real missions. Finally, they'll be adding quality of life improvement to Wormhole, and they will be removing the duration, plus they will have this icon that tells you how many times you can use a Wormhole. It's a good quality of life improvement, but I will be using this slot though to replace it with a Helminth build to further improve the genocidal power of Nova. Take note that this is how I want to play Nova, and I am no means of telling you that you should do the same. Moving on, let's talk about the Caliban changes. First, his passive will be unchanged, but since Caliban is getting an invulnerability phase during Caster, his fourth ability now, the passive will be able to stack status effects immunity charges while doing so. Then Razor Gyre will have a massive quality of life improvement as it will now inflict Tau status effects on enemies struck while refunding some of his health, shield, and energy pools, all while traversing the battlefield. The best part about this is the Warframe will now have an overflow mechanic wherein if you gain more health after casting Razor Gyre, then it will turn into shield, and if you have overflowing shield, then it will turn into an overguard. Also, Caliban brings a new element and can inflict Tau damage and Tau status effects upon the battlefield with many of his abilities. Similarly to Void Damage, Tau damage is neutral so that no enemy will be resistant to it. The Tau's status effect inflicts status chance vulnerability to enemies affected by it, with a max of 10 stacks culminating in 100% status chance vulnerability, with each stack individually lasting 8 seconds. This mechanic was originally introduced by Dante in his Page Flight Peregrims, in which you could apply status chance vulnerability to enemies. This mechanic increases the likelihood an enemy receives a status effect when being hit, which only means that condition overload or gundition overload builds will be overpowered with Caliban right after the update. Not to mention that the crowd control of Caliban will also be reworked, and don't forget that he also has defense stripping which gets a quality of life improvement. For his sentient wrath, they will finally remove the target cap, which means every enemies within the specified range of the skill will get hit. This is massive for survivability, but I think it will be more helpful in obliterating enemies easily. The skill will still have the damage vulnerability, along with Tau damage and Tau status effects which is really massive for the Warframe's DPS out while using weapons. Not to mention that enemies will not float randomly in the air, and it will be similar to Hydroid's tentacles will enemies suspended will be in place and easily making them vulnerable to any sort of damage. And then we have his fusion strike which will finally get an invulnerability phase while casting. The skill's damage will also be changed to Tau damage and this will be massive also since after a sentient wraith cast you can strip the armor and shield effectively of those enemies suspended in the air. Then you can finish them off with your guns or even use Razor Gyre if you need to restore health and shields. And to top all of these amazing changes to the Warframe, Caliban will also receive awesome changes on his lethal progeny skill. This is basically used in the past to keep the Warframe alive by exploiting his shield regeneration effect, but after the update you will finally have three sentient generals in your disposal. Okay, let me elaborate this. Caliban can now summon three types of sentients, namely the Ortholists, Summonlists, and Conchalists. All sentient summons will naturally adapt to incoming enemy damage. You can only summon a set of sentients at a time, so no mixing of one Conchalist, two Ortholists, or one of each sentient type. Each sentient comes with its own unique mechanic. Conchalists will match your fusion strike with one of their own, Ortholists will deliver a rain of guaranteed Tau status across the battlefield, and Summonlists, capable of summoning six resilient Coralists, that will draw attention from you and your allies while ensuring your shields are never depleted. The Ortholists will be massive in status, priming enemies with the new Tau status effects, and I also like the Summonlist that can distract enemies and get this, his sentience will benefit from a 10x damage multiplier against all non-sentient factions. For enemies, whenever a sentient unit deals sentient damage, Caliban will really be fun to play with after the update, and his new kit gives the Warframe more versatility, and not just a Warframe that you only boost survivability and rely on your gun's power solely to kill enemies. After the update, you can improve your gun or melee weapons damage with his abilities, and survivability will never be an issue with this Warframe. And finally, let's talk about Wukong and Hildren. These are small changes, but I think you want to hear what they'll be doing with Wukong and Hildren in the upcoming update. Wukong has developed a disruptive playstyle regarding his ability to animation cancel heavy attacks with Cloud Walker. This leads to fast spam of max combo counter damage, especially on weapons such as the Arc of Titron. In the upcoming update, they will be removing this technique as when you heavy slam while using Cloud Walker to exit the ability, you cannot activate Cloud Walker again until the heavy slam animation is complete. Also, Wukong's Celestial Stomp augment has a rather unfair advantage, being able to affect normally crowd control immune enemies, so we're adjusting it to meet the standard of other crowd control abilities. Long story short, use the Arc of Titron technique for Wukong while it lasts, as you only got a few days before it gets patched. For Hildren, it's good news as they will reduce the max shield cost of a Balefire charge shot and increase the maximum charge shot damage
damage that can be inflicted, then Balefire Charger is now automatically equipped upon activating Aegis Storm instead of needing to activate it. They will also improve the mobility of Aegis Storm and make Hildren invulnerable after deactivating the ability. And finally, you will be able to cast your Pillage and even Helmet abilities while using Aegis Storm. This really opens up a new playstyle for Hildren, and I think I'm kind of interested in doing another build and not just relying on the old but gold gloom combo. So that's all about it. I hope that you have learned something from this video that you can use after the rework and changes for these four Warframes. Before leaving, please help us with the YouTube algorithm by simply liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you on the next one.